Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we talk about the all important topic of timely security vulnerability remediation by combining a security operations center as a service with patch management and software deployment. My name is Alex Zagievsky. I am a senior solutions architect for Winslow Technology Group. And joining me today are John Davies, principal pre sales systems engineer for Arctic Wolf Networks, and Scott Sager, alliance manager. Or Automox. Before we jump into today's discussion, I'll start off with a brief overview of Winslow Technology Group and then hand the mic over to John and then Scott to dive into their platforms. Throughout the presentation, we're happy to take your questions via the Q&A feature of this webinar. However, because we have a limited amount of time to get through a ton of really great material, we'll have to follow up with you directly via email after the webinar to answer those questions. A few words about Winslow. We've been in business for almost 20 years as a technology solutions provider headquartered in Waltham, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. We have a distributed workforce as well with satellite offices in Charlotte, North Carolina, New York City, and now Washington, DC. We specialize in hardware, software, and services, not only for the core data center, but also end user compute complemented by our cybersecurity, disaster recovery, and cloud solutions. We strive to identify and develop expertise in game-changing technologies. Our partnerships with as-a-service industry leaders such as AWN and Automox being stellar examples of that, all so that we can bring you the best possible outcome. And speaking of managed services, this is the perfect opportunity to introduce Winslow Technology Group's latest offering to support our customers, WTG Northstar MS. This is our co-managed technology service that provides an affordable support and management solution complemented by those from our friends at AWN and Automox. Much like their services, we will augment your team to reduce risk, increase efficiency, and provide a peace of mind for both the business executives and IT teams alike. Lastly, before I yield the floor to our guests, I'd like to point out that our cybersecurity solutions and process in general are based on the NIST cybersecurity framework shown here. We strive to provide our customers with an organized, comprehensive, and cost-effective cybersecurity program that spans all five pillars of this framework, providing a holistic approach. And with that, I'll turn it over to John. Thank you, Alex. There we go. Perfect. So good morning. Uh, my name is John Davies. Uh, I'm from Arctic Wolf. I'm a principal pre-sales uh, architect here. And today I want to talk to you just a little bit about Arctic Wolf and our mission to, to end cyber risk. Uh, I want to take our time today to, to outline some practical approaches that can help you as an organization or arrive at a place where you know, in your specific business context and, and taking into account your IT environment that you, you finally start to feel in control uh, and that that starts to feel like there's there's an end to, to cyber risk. So the way we've approached this is, you know, when we started to dig into what cyber risk actually is, uh, cyber risk is a business risk, right? And cybersecurity should help reduce the risk to an organization, uh, but it isn't. Uh, in their yearly security priority study, IEG found that about 87% of security leaders believe that their organizations are falling short in addressing cyber risk. And it's not for the want of, of trying when you start to look at the resources that are being expended year in and year out on cybersecurity. The conclusion that we unfortunately arrive at is that there's an effectiveness problem when it comes to cybersecurity, right? So we want to dig in a little bit more and, and Try to understand why security leaders, you know, aren't feeling confident. Like, what's driving uh, that that feeling in the, in the industry? And you know, kind of, there, there's really two pieces. So the first is, you know, they're feeling exposed, right? They're concerned about the likelihood of attacks and, and intrusions and breaches. Uh, in fact, 59% of organizations have been breached at least once in the past year, according to, to Forrester, uh, and that's basically a coin toss, right? Uh, so for any security or IT or risk leader, that's a pretty uncomfortable place to, to live, right? And the most recent months also continue to highlight the, the prevalence of other high profile vulnerabilities. So uh, things like, you know, Log4j and Spring4Shell and, and different exchange vulnerabilities, 
Uh, in our own research that, that we reported on in our 2020 security operations report, uh, we found that it was taking organizations an additional 40 days to, to patch critical vulnerabilities. Uh, second, uh, leaders are concerned and, and aware of the potential impact of those attacks, right? Uh, there's an estimate that the average cost of a data breach in the U.S. was around $8.6 million, uh, according to, uh, to Accenture and Ponymon. Uh, the same survey found that the mean time to detect stretched to 206 days, right? Well over six months. Uh, and it's only common sense to appreciate that the longer an attacker goes undetected, the, the bigger the potential impact. Uh, to the the uh, to the customer and, and the environment is right. So if we look at cyber risk, that's really the factor of the impact of an event times the likelihood of an event. Um, and it's not that organizations aren't trying to to manage cyber risk. They're implementing many different technologies and and spending heavily on tools, but they're not getting the the results that that they want or they need. Uh, so that's where Arctic Wolf comes in uh, to play here. So we've built a company based on on taking the operational approach to security. Uh, and in doing so, uh, we've built what we call the Arctic Wolf platform, uh, which delivers uh, different solutions that are all part of the security operations framework. So if we dig into this a little bit more and, and we start to uh, kind of peel back the layers of, of how this works, uh, the Arctic Wolf platform is, is a cloud native platform that delivers all of the key elements of the security operations framework, right? So uh, similar to NIST, so identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Uh, so that we can minimize the impact of cyber intrusions to an organization. Our approach is, is pretty simple. Uh, we want to start first by you know, leveraging the existing technology stack that uh, an organization ha has made uh, into, into their technology, so uh, it made investments in. So we want to basically get broad visibility across attack services, right? So things like endpoint, and network, and cloud, and identity, and human. Um, you know, we're vendor neutral, so we want to work with what customers already have and, and not force them to rip and replace. And then we have our own security stack that, that sits on top of that that consists of you know, things like agents and scanners and, and sensors to augment the, the stack as needed. And then secondly, we, we centralize all of that data in our platform. Right. Uh, and we do that for a couple different reasons. So one for storage, but also for enrichment and analysis. Uh, so this helps with compliance, but is also the foundation of our, our threat and vulnerability detection capabilities. So as data streams in via our sensors or scanners or, or agents, uh, we can enrich it with threat intelligence and then process it through an ever increasing number of, of threat detection engines. Uh, and then we have our triage team, which is a, a 24 by 7 team of security uh, experts who investigate alerts that are generated by the platform. Right. This team provides tactical support and guidance to, to our customers and also to our concierge security team during security events. And I'll talk about them a little bit more here in a second. Uh, one of the biggest differentiators for us, though, when it comes to uh, just integration with our customers is that we allow for unlimited data ingestion. Right? We don't charge based off the, the data volume or events per second or, or telemetry that's, that's generated and ingested into the platform, which makes pricing really predictable. Uh, where sometimes there's other solutions can can hit you with you know surprise bills or force to reduce the number of of items that you're monitoring or or reduce the the amount of telemetry that you're sending. Uh, but once we get all of that data centralized in in our platform, uh, we start to build solutions on top of of that, right? But the key differentiator for us is that all of the solutions are delivered by our concierge security team, right? So we we pair you with a team of security experts who not only monitor the data, but also learn the organization and the unique requirements so well that they can optimize all of our solutions for maximum effectiveness inside the environment, right? So they, they work with you on, on tactical day-to-day -day items while also helping with security strategy and ensuring that you advance along what we call a security journey, which is basically making sure that we're increasing security posture, you know, day over day, week over week, uh, month over month. Uh, the solutions that we have currently are managed detection and response, which is your traditional security operations uh, as a service. Uh, we have a solution that we're going to talk about today called managed risk, uh, which is a vulnerability and, and asset identification uh, pro, uh, platform or, or solution. Uh, then we have managed cloud monitoring, which actually takes the tenants of managed detection response and managed risk and applies those to the cloud. And then lastly, we have uh, managed security awareness, which is a, a security awareness uh, solution that's completely managed by, by Arctic Wolf. Uh, so like I said, today we're gonna talk about managed risk uh, specifically. 
so this was the second solution that we we came to market with. Uh, you know, we understand that that detecting and responding to incidents is is obviously necessary, uh, but managed risk is really designed to help prevent incidents in the first place, right? Uh, we know that this is a, a capability that, that's badly needed. Uh, CI, the CIS or, or Center for Internet Security uh, says that 80% of breaches could have been prevented if the organization had met the top five CIS controls, right? Um, and we're, we're really uniquely effective at managed risk because the concierge security team that I talked about previously really takes a holistic approach to, to digital risk, right? We start with the basic tasks of discovering risks in software and, and assets and accounts. And then we find risk in those items by both looking for vulnerabilities and benchmarking against configuration best practices, right? Once we have that perspective, we can advise you on how to prioritize your remediation actions to ensure that you're continually hardening your security posture, right? If we go back to, to kind of the NIST framework or the security operations framework, uh, what we're really doing here is, you know, helping uh, identify device and, and software, you know, inventory. Uh, the protect pillar comes from really reviewing and securing configurations and, and doing different vulnerability assessments. Uh, and then recover comes from being able to conduct in-depth reviews with our concierge security team to find root cause and, and validate that it's been fully remediated and then help you implement proactive countermeasures to make sure that, that either that vulnerability is not exploited again or, or there's compensating controls uh, in place. So the solution itself really has a couple of different uh, different pieces to it. So uh, again, at the top here, you'll see that all of our solutions are delivered through the concierge security team. Uh, we provide network vulnerability assessments where we have a, uh, a scanner that goes in the environment that is scanning IP addresses and, and looking for vulnerabilities on those devices. Uh, we can do credentialed or, or uncredentialed scans. Uh, we have a universal agent across both solutions, both MDR and managed risk. Uh, and for managed risk specifically, it allows us to do host-based vulnerability assessments as well so that we can see vulnerabilities on things like servers and, and endpoints in, in more detail. Uh, we also have an external vulnerability scan that looks at your public facing uh, IP addresses and domains uh, and also looks for not only you know what services are, are visible to the world and, and if there's any vulnerabilities associated with that, but we also uh, perform uh, a WASP top 10 scans against any public facing applications as well. Uh, we can, through our agent, benchmark uh, endpoints and servers against the, the CIS controls as well as go out and look in uh, in different breach databases and in different dark web uh, areas to see if there's any accounts that are related to your organization may be out there where there's a, a username and password either in clear text or, or easily decryptable. And then when we start to take into account that, you know, when it comes to Article Wolf, we want as much visibility as possible, right? We really talk about wanting broad visibility. Uh, the cloud is obviously an important piece there as well. So, you know, in addition to, to running things like, you know, our agent on virtual machines that may be out in different infrastructure services, uh, we also have as part of the solution, a feature called cloud security posture management, which is looking at the configuration of those different infrastructure services. So things like AWS or, or Azure or GCP and looking for common misconfigurations that can then drive a conversation with the concierge security team to help understand, help you and, and us understand if it's, you know, configured that way for a business need or if it's maybe just a misconfiguration or maybe just a default configuration uh, that, that hadn't been tweaked. So the solution really gives us a lot of visibility and, and very broad visibility into the environment so that we can first understand what assets are, are part of the, the threat surface and then look for uh, different items that whether they're vulnerabilities or configuration issues that an attacker or a bad actor can use to gain a foothold uh, into the environment. The architecture for this is, is uh, not super complicated. So I mentioned earlier that we have a, a scanner and, and uh, an agent as part of this, as well as working with different APIs for, for different services, depending on, on what you may be using in the cloud. Uh, so we have, you know, first is a, is a scanner. So the managed risk scanner gets deployed either as a virtual machine or a physical appliance uh, anywhere on the network that has layer three uh, reachability. Uh, so a basic rule of thumb for deploying the scanner is if you can ping it, you can scan it, right? Uh, and this includes any offsite devices that are connected to the network via via VPN. Uh, so the scanner performs continuous internal vulnerability assessment scans on devices that are on the same layer two network as the scanner and devices that have that layer three reachability, right? And it, it does it against a set of known CVEs. 
Uh, the scanner also performs monthly external vulnerability assessment scans of, of web servers and, and external web properties against a set of known CVEs, right? The external scanner uh, will also scan the external environment against sources of, like I mentioned earlier, of gray and dark web data and information to identify uh, corporate credential exposure and, and the risk of account takeover, right? We see more and more attacks that are leveraging legitimate credentials today, like these days, uh, compared to previously versus uh, something more traditional that might be utilizing like malware, for example. Um, the scanner can be deployed in, in cloud infrastructure environments to perform uh, cloud security posture management scans uh, and identify misconfigurations in different infrastructure environments and then quantify it and return with an inventory of, of that infrastructure uh, environment as well. Uh, our agent I mentioned is also universal, so it's the same agent regardless of, of what services you have with us. Uh, and that agent will perform host-based vulnerability assessments as well as the CIS uh, benchmarking against the CIS controls. And then lastly, we have APIs into the different services like, uh, you know, maybe Shodan or uh, different infrastructure services like AWS and, and uh, Azure so that we can look at uh, assets that are that are in those environments as well as the risk and, and vulnerabilities that are associated there. Um, but it's one thing to say, like, here's the items that we're scanning for, here's the things that we're looking for, but what does that, that look like in, in real life, right? So uh, I want to walk you guys through a couple of timelines. Uh, that, that show these features and how we respond to these in, in, uh, in real world examples. Uh, so this first example was a, a, an exploit that utilized, or I should say an attack that utilized the exchange vulnerabilities that came out uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and this was against a construction firm uh, that was a customer of ours. So uh, a customer, you know, on August 2nd completed their 30 day onboarding with us. So when you come on board as a customer, there's a 30 day window at which we try to get you uh, onboarded before uh, the service actually kicks in and, and service delivery starts. Uh, so that had, had happened or, or completed on, on August 2nd. On August 7th, uh, the agent observed, so this is the, the Arctic Wolf agent that was installed on, on endpoints and servers, the, the agent had observed that there was uh, PowerShell enumeration commands that are being run on, on one of the exchange servers. So that happened around 7.27 p.m. So generally there's not, uh, you know, not anybody in the office at that point. Uh, it took about two minutes for all that data to get ingested and, and correlated in the platform uh, and, and get that in front of our, our triage team, who's again that 24 by 17 that's, that's looking at, uh, looking at, at vulnerabilities and, and looking at incidents that may be occurring in a, in a customer's environment. Uh, so about 7.30, the triage team begins their investigations. Uh, they confirm that, you know, enumeration are, is happening, right? And it's possibly uh, the ransomware by the name of, of Ryuk, right? So we create a ticket, contact the customer, uh, we also see that about 7.50 p.m. Uh, via the agent again, uh, we see that uh, there was a dropper uh, that was installed on, on the Exchange server, and there were some PowerShell commands that were, that were run where they were reaching out to a specific IP address. Uh, and because of the different threat intelligence that we have in the, in the platform, the different feeds that, that we subscribe to, we were able to, you know, we knew that that was a, a known command and control server that was in Finland. All right, so now at this point, we're about uh, about 30 minutes into into the the, the uh, attack. Uh, again, the agents uh, saw that there was a user added to to a local admin group uh, on the Exchange server, uh, and that the admin account uh, credentials were reset at the same time. In 809, uh, we got some information or telemetry from Sentinel-1 and the Arctic Wolf agent where there was attempted lateral movement uh, using that user who's, who was added to the admin group from devices, uh, from you know, device one to device two. Uh, at this point, while working with the customer, the customer took the exchange server offline. Uh, and at this point, the customer was satisfied with containment for that for this event at, at this particular moment, right? So we're talking about uh, about 40 minutes at this point. Uh, but that's not all. So when we talk about the difference between being a, a tactical service or uh, or strategic, you know, if you're a tactical service, this is the point at which kind of the story ends. The incident is contained for the moment. Uh, the customer has remediation steps and, and understands what to do to not only get back to a healthy security posture, but also how to patch the the, the vulnerabilities for exchange. Uh, but we take it a step further uh, and we have this, this strategic aspect of it, right? So uh, our concierge security team sets up a Zoom call with the customer to walk them through those remediation steps, make sure they understand what happened, what, uh, how the attacker got in. Uh, they delete the dropper, they delete the user account that was created and reset the admin credentials. 
they also reset the credentials for any users that were cached on the exchange servers, uh, as well as any domain credentials that had accessed that server after August 7th when the breach started. Uh, and then also we worked with them to close any external connections to, to the exchange server. As part of that idea that I talked about earlier about the security journey, right? Uh, we initiated a vulnerability scan on, on Exchange, right? So that scan identifies or, or did identify that there were actually missing patches uh, on that Exchange server that dated back six plus months, including zero days. Uh, so this is one of those situations where a service like Managed Risk really could have stopped in and, and helped this customer proactively and, and stop this attack from happening had they known that they were that far behind and that there was critical zero days that were there. Um, what the customer actually had happen was they, they had taken a look and, and they did have a, 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 a patching uh, you know, protocol and, and process in place, but what they found is their third party patching tool was actually malfunctioning and not updating uh, and patching different servers as, as needed, right? So they were actually able to utilize our service to, to confirm uh, how other solutions inside the environment were, were working and, and operating. So that's just one example of, of how you know, managed risk can, can help out an organization and help stave off uh, different different breaches and, and different types of attacks where attackers can use you know vulnerabilities to get a foothold into the environment. One of the other items I'd like to talk about today too, as well, is is just log for J, right? So this is something that's um, you know been on everybody's minds the last couple of of weeks as it, it kind of hit ahead there and it has kind of peaked at this point. But I wanted to walk through you know service aspect aside, just what we're doing for the security community as a whole and what we're doing for organizations, uh, you know, regardless of of whether they're a, a a customer of ours or not, right? So if we we look at the timeline for Log4j, it started you know on Thursday, December 9th, right? So security researchers had uh, sent out a, a, a proof of concept of, of exploit code for a specific CVE, which was a remote code execution vulnerability in Log4j, which if you're not familiar, uh, is a Java logging library that's used in billions of, of applications, right? It's, it's one, of, one of the largest uh, uh, libraries that, that's in use, right? Um, so that was on Thursday, December 9th. Uh, on Friday, December 10th, we actually saw that there was multiple campaigns that emerged where they were actively exploiting that CV against the, you know, different vulnerable public facing systems. Uh, and they were doing that for, for to basically a couple of reasons. So one was deploy malware, things, but also things like crypto miners and, and backdoors into the environments as well. Uh, also on Friday, December 10th, we basically, after we saw those, those active campaigns, uh, we deployed new detections uh, for those exploitation attempts of our uh, for that particular vulnerability, right? So uh, basically, we started to write our own rules and, and push those down and, and into our customers' environments and into the platform so that we could start detecting those attacks. Uh, we also released a security bulletin to our customers, uh, just assuring them that we were aware and, and actively searching for those indicators across of, of compromise in their environment. Uh, also, uh, on the 10th, we, we had proactively gone and, and done a, a first pass across all of our customers, right, to do an investigation to see uh, if we had any customers that, that were actively affected by, by this particular exploit. So at that point, all at-risk customers were contacted by the end of the day on Friday. Uh, we actually, you know, kind of anecdotally had everybody up to, uh, you know, senior VP level uh, on the phone contacting customers to let them know if they were, if they were vulnerable or not. Uh, over the weekend, uh, so after we had all the detections in place, we we're really able to, to focus on, you know, building a, a tool uh, that would help detect the vulnerability at the source, as well as integrating the signatures uh, that were being provided by, by any third parties, right? So we spent basically the weekend to sit down and, and develop a, a scanner, uh, which we called the, the Log4Shell Deep Scan tool. Um, and we actually set that to deploy on Monday the 13th. So we spent the weekend working on it, deployed it on the 13th. Uh, tested it in, in live customer environments to, to verify that it worked and, and that it was consistent and, and that the data it was reporting was, was good. Um, that time took about uh, until noon on Tuesday, the 14th, uh, you know, deemed that it was successful and we released it to all of our customers at that point, right? Uh, also on Tuesday, there was another vulnerability uh, for, uh, it was a different CV that was reported. Uh, this one uh, basically led to denial of service attacks. Um, so that was released as well. Uh, by Friday, we had upgrade, upgraded uh, 
both the script as well as releasing another security bulletin to you know assure customers again that we are actively looking for for IOCs for the the new vulnerability that was found, uh, as well as releasing version 2.0 of the the deep scan tool to all of our customers, uh, as well as actually open sourcing the deep scan tool uh, to anyone in the security community that wanted to download it uh, and run it. So that was actually published out to to GitHub, and then since then we have been you know just continuing to monitor and release updates for for both uh, our platform in, in the way of different indicators of compromise as, as well as uh, the, the script itself. So just a way for us to, to give back to the community as well. Uh, right now we're, we're in the midst of the, uh, the Spring for Shell vulnerability. So if you've seen that, uh, that in the news lately, we have another tool that, that's been released uh, earlier this week for that. And we continue to monitor that and add indicators into the platform as well uh, and proactively reach out to customers as, as, uh, as they're found to, to have that vulnerability in their environment as well. So. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in seeing what the what the platform looks like and, and how the tool works and, and uh, kind of what the workflow and the process is, uh, you know, I'd, I'd ask you to to reach out to uh, to Winslow. We can get something started and, and uh, set up a meeting and, and walk you guys through exactly what that looks like and, and how the tool performs. Um, with that, uh, you know, if there's any questions, you can put them in the chat and we, we can get back to you with answers on those. Uh, but for now, I think what uh, what I'd like to do is just thank you for your time and uh, like to introduce Scott Sager from Automox. And uh, here you go, Scott, I'm going to make you presenter and take it away. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Go in there. OK. Well, uh, I think John covered a lot of really good information uh, that I think is very helpful. And I, hopefully people are, you know, getting a feel at, you know, the security operations and tools and all of those things and has never been a shortage out there in the marketplace. But what's really happened is there's oftentimes gaps that, that occur within security operations to IT operations. And that's that's where a company like Automox becomes formed and, and comes from. So this discovery and uncovering vulnerabilities has been happening in security operations for quite some time. What's been difficult, and you saw this with John's example that he showed, is that the, the remediating and the fixing of these vulnerabilities has really had some gaps. And this has happened for a number of reasons. In some cases, it might be instances where the security operations teams might be uncovering the vulnerabilities, but they're not responsible for going out and remediating those. That may fall to an IT operations team. So sometimes a disconnect between between teams is oftentimes a reason for it. But there's also other reasons where a lot of the legacy tools that we had out there just didn't work very well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why Automox was formed and what we are solving from just an overall perspective, but then I'll get into some specifics around remediating vulnerabilities and how we've taken technologies like Arctic Wolf and created some integrations to be able to simplify some of that motion. So the historically, the tools that were used in this space, and you saw this with, uh, with John's example and the Log4j that he gave, that the tools that they were using there, these on-premise tools, they were, they typically required that. So when I had a patching solution, I required on-premise hardware, servers, other things to be able to do it. Often, oftentimes, I also needed a VPN. So I needed to be able to create some type of remote connection and that created some other problems. And then being able to manage or effectively work with cloud workloads. So you have a lot of these different things that became very legacy and became outdated. So what Automox is, is we are a cloud native uh, platform. We're an IT operations platform. And so we, as a cloud native platform, we do not require a VPN. We do not require on-premise hardware. Uh, we do have a, uh, an agent, a lightweight agent that we deploy out there across multiple platforms. So we deploy it across Windows, Mac OS, Linux. And we have the ability to uh, not only remediate and patch a lot of the vulnerabilities that get uncovered out there, we can also deploy software. We can also configure other actions. And I'll get into what we did with Arctic Wolf specifically of automating some actions that they were doing in terms of going out there and uncovering vulnerabilities. The ability to act and the time to act is the reason that the platform was created is that we wanted to reduce the amount of time that was spent on going out and remediating vulnerabilities. And 
um, having something that was, you know, deploying in 15 minutes and operational across all of your endpoints in the environment. But the biggest reason for that is that we wanted to be able to patch and remediate vulnerabilities in a much faster time. 90% of our customers are remediating vulnerabilities and zero day type vulnerabilities in less than a day. We've seen most patching solutions and other solutions out there that are taking some cases, you know, weeks, some cases months in order for them to push out uh, a remediation to a vulnerability as it becomes discovered. And a recent report came out that kind of validated this, and this is really, we've seen a big uptick in terms of uh, the speed in which these uh, attackers are happening out there. So we saw about 136% increase in mass exploitation from 2020 to 2021. Uh, and when the, you look at how quickly these tools are happening when they go in and they're saying, hey, we're, we're putting an exploit out there, they're exploiting it, and the time to patch was in that gap, it went from 42 days down to 12 days in terms of how, how, how fast they were moving in order to uh, push that exploit out there. So when you see this uptick in the speed and the time that they're going out there and, and coordinating this attack, we needed to be able to move faster. And so Automox has done this. By our uh, cloud native platform, we've been able to push these patches out there in a much faster manner and being able to close that attack surface because if we don't do that, that's where these guys are being able to go out there and exploit those vulnerabilities. So as an automated patch management solution, yeah, we can patch everything in there, your servers, laptops, cloud workloads, and 90% of those customer patches are happening in less than 24 hours. So the ability to upload these vulnerabilities, these CVEs that get uncovered, and to be able to upload those into an Automox platform, being able to go then push those patches out in a much faster manner is what Automox is all about. And I talked a little bit about these worklets, the ability to automate any uh, any workflow that might need to happen out there. So this is a part of our platform that we've used to be able to do use for agent deployments, to be able to push software out, to be able to also automate a number of different actions. And we actually use this particular technology specifically with Arctic Wolf. So John kind of gave you the example of what they created in terms of their uh, Log4j uh, scan that was going out there and scanning specifically Java applications for these specific CVEs. What Automox did is we actually created a worklet or a scriptable action that would go out there and, and push that scan from Automox. We would go out and push that scan. So it would go out there and scan those Java applications in order for us to detect whether or not those CVEs are out there. And when we do that, we can uncover whether things needed to be patched or needed to be updated. And so by tying those two tools together, we've been able to quickly remediate a lot of these uh, that vulnerability. And obviously, this one's kind of been highlighted a lot. As John mentioned, this has been on a lot of people's minds the last few months. But being able to tie the two technologies together of not only uh, the discovery of that vulnerability, but then the you know as you uncover that and then being able to go out and remediate and patch that through Automox, so that's what we have the ability to do. So as you look at Automox as we as a technology deploying this lightweight agent, the ability to automate any of these actions. So I gave you a specific example of we're automating this specific. Um, CVE or Log4j with uh, Arctic Wolf, we'll be able to do that with other uh, scans that they may have. We can use this worklet or scriptable technology to push that for any of these new ones that happen. And now we can go out and, and patch and, and remediate those CVEs as they become uncovered in a much quicker manner. And uh, my role here within Automox is in the integrations community. So we are looking to create more and more of these integrations, not only with these discovery type technologies, but other automation tools that might happen so that you can tie in uh, not only what you're doing from a vulnerability management perspective, you may be tying it back to um, other ticketing systems or other things that might be happening as an IT operations platform. So we're, we're highlighting and targeting these outcomes over um, over some of the analytics and some of the other discovery that's happening. And we have, as a fast-growing company, we have over 3,200 customers that have uh, 
go move to Automox out there. And again, the main reason for that is the ability for us to be able to be a cloud native platform, not relying a lot on a lot of the old uh, legacy type tools. One of the other big things is many cases in many environments, we see customers had multiple patching solutions because they needed something for Windows, they needed something for Mac, they needed something for Linux. And so Automox's ability to be able to go across platform and to, to uh, patch any of those operating systems, it's helped organizations to be able to consolidate down and be able to get a better handle on what things needed to be remediated. So I know I, I kind of moved through here fairly quickly and I'm sure there will be questions as we follow up, but if there are questions, we definitely would encourage you to uh, reach out to Winslow or in the, in the chat and we'll be happy to uh, answer those questions. But with that, I'm gonna hand this back to Alex. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so thank you, gentlemen. That was a really great overview of your respective solutions and what they can do in order to make our infrastructures more secure, especially in this increasingly distributed world. Well, Scott and John did give us a lot to digest, especially a lot of really staggering statistics on just how dangerous and how quickly the cyber threat world is evolving. So if you're unsure where to start or how to continue your cybersecurity journey, I'd like to suggest starting with Winslow's complimentary NIST security evaluation. This about an hour long consultative interview will help you identify areas for improvement as well as answer your top of mind questions. And I'm sure that there's still a lot of questions out there. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to put them into the uh, Q&A feature of this webinar. If not, please do send them to us via email. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope to have provided you with some valuable knowledge. If you'd like to get more information about Arctic Wolf, Automox, Winslow's North Star Managed Service, or our assessments, please drop us a note at webinars at winslowtg.com. Have a great day, stay healthy and secure. Till next time.